It has been a while. Well, not really, maybe a couple days, I don't know. But I'm here in beautiful Thailand, more specifically Bangkok, walking down one of the, uh, hmm, not to say nice rivers, but I'm not sure what the standard is here in Thailand, but this is one of the more quiet areas. I've walked this path before, so I'm familiar that I'll be able to have plenty of time in peace and quiet to talk about what's been going on. Um, where should I even begin? I guess it'd be the airport in Singapore. First of all, Singapore airport is very good to leave at least. And once we'll get there too, got some, some chickens, some roosters, but Unlike the normal big, like, big giant main line for security, right? Singapore had their security at each gate. So you don't actually get, like, right after security, you're on the plane. It's like that. It was pretty interesting. Um, that made it so, like, each place had a way smaller line, right? Uh, a lot more efficient. You really didn't even need to be there that early. I got there very early just to be safe, but... Yeah, it was very, very fast once things started actually going. But nothing crazy on the flight over. Pretty standard window seat. Just chilled. It was like, what, two hours maybe flight? Some turbulence, but you know, whatever. Landed in Thailand. And unlike Singapore, we landed in Singapore. There's a lot of stuff you had to do, like, you know, skin your passport, all this stuff. Thailand, you kind of just walked off the plane. They were like, yes, welcome. Um, that's because I have a U.S. passport, though. Other countries have to do other things, but U.S., you kind of just walk right in. Uh, so when I got in, I had two options at the airport. Well, two choice, well, two optional options. One was transfer cash over. Two was get a SIM card. I didn't check the prices there, but I knew the SIM cards would be a little overpriced at the airport, so instantly pass on that. And then... <laughs> The cash was actually like no, no transfer fee. So I really, I could, I could have done it there free of charge, but Singapore blinded me because I didn't need cash for anything in Singapore. Got the going by. Yeah, Singapore, I used my car for everything. It was super chill. And so I got blinded by the the no cash needed, right? So we'll get back to that. The point is, I didn't get a SIM card there. I didn't get any cash there. So I had the Grab app. Uh, got a ride to my place. It was about 30 minutes away and it cost like $9. So cheap. So cheap. I could have gotten a uh, motorbike as well. Motorcycle. But it would have been a little risky with my bags. And it would have cost like $3. Like it's crazy. Uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to get the motorcycle. It's a little scary here on the road. We'll get to in a second. But I got in the car. I got to my place. Chill the rest of the night. Got some 7-Eleven 7 snacks. Um, the next day, I had a ch I set some challenges for myself. One, had to go eat some spicy curry. You know, I've, I've heard the rumors. Thailand, very spicy. And oh my gosh, it was great. Two, so I put in my GPS. I have no SIM card at this point. So I have to only... I can only put like one place in. I have the maps downloaded, so I can always find where I need to go. But I put, I looked for a while with the Wi-Fi at my place for a really good curry place. Found one, went there. Absolutely delicious. The curry costs like a, mm, let me see. It costs about $2.10. Extremely good. I got this uh, lemon shake too just in case it was too too spicy because citrusy stuff helps with spice apparently. Uh, and I wouldn't say it was too spicy, but I am glad I got the shake because it was like, what, 11 at this point. I didn't want to be dead the rest of the day. So it was great. After that, here's where the challenges came in. So without using my phone, I needed to find one, a SIM card, two, sunscreen, and then eventually the third, which I learned after walking around for a while, cash. You are 1000% going to need cash in Thailand if you plan on going to one of the 10 million uh, food stands. Even which I eventually learned in the store, I went to this deli, 
Uh, they got a donut for dessert later. Uh, they took cash only. Uh, spoiler alert, I did have cash. But those are my three goals, right? Goal number one, SIM card goal number two, sunscreen goal number three, uh, cash. So I just left and started wandering. Uh, I had the whole day ahead of me, nothing in particular. I wanted to explore the city. Uh, Bangkok is ginormous. My small brain was not ready because Singapore, with the seven days I was there, I walked around. I really walked, not almost everywhere, but I got a good sense of the entire city. Bangkok, on the first day after all my exploring, I walked like about 20, 23 kilometers, and I do not feel like I was anywhere near knowing the city. Anyway, I began wandering. Uh, I did eventually find some malls and other stuff, and I did learn at 7 Elevens. I noticed that most 7 Elevens, there are SIM cards, but I was staring at them like, and they're all in Thai. I was looking at them and like, will I be able to install this myself? Okay, probably not, because the one in Singapore, they like push up a bunch of buttons on my phone. She did some Konami code. I had no idea what was happening. They did it for you. And so I'm like, okay, the receptionist, the clerk, the cashier, whatever they're called, we probably have to do something with the SIM card. The problem is the lines at 7-Eleven are kind of giant and they're going really, really fast. And I can't speak Thai. And it did not seem like the people at the counter could speak English. So I'm like, hmm, is it worth getting a SIM card here? Probably not. So my goal then changed to SIM card from a phone store. Because even if the phone store could not speak English, if I ask for a SIM, they're gonna be like, okay, SIM, yep, this we do this all the time, tourist SIM, very easy. So that was my new goal. Walked around more. I could not find a single phone store. I have no idea what they're called, no idea anything. Eventually, it was in this giant mall, like bigger than the Singapore ones. It was like eight above ground stories, three below ground. This is eventually where I got the deli too. In this place, there was this giant, just I guess, general store. It was mainly a grocery store, but I had some other stuff too, and a pharmacy and everything, which that's where I found the sunscreen. It cost like mm, 900 baht, which is about $27. Yeah, this is the most expensive thing I bought so far. Probably that I'll ever buy. It's always the sunscreen, man. The things to protect you are always the most expensive. Um, so I got that first thing checked off the list. Paid with my card, great. Walked out of there. Explore the rest of the mall. This mall is so big, it took me about two hours to get the whole thing. And I'm, I'm done at this point. I'm, I'm leaving the mall. Nothing's here. I'm like, no SIM card here. No cash exchange. I do have to duck here, by the way. This is a... <laughs> uh, very good architecture. Um, no cash exchange or nothing. So I'm leaving the mall. I'm on like the sixth floor at this point. I'm going down the escalator. And then as I'm on the escalator, I hear someone say like, like, like Sim. And my head turns. And I see this guy next to this like counter. Uh, this tourist, presumably. By this counter, speaking in English. Asking about a SIM, excuse me, a SIM card. And the store he's in front of is like A I S I A U S. I think it's A I S. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. Now the point is, it was like this little booth clerk in the wall would never have pegged it for a phone store. But then, all, like, it barely on the side of it uh, is the word 5G. So I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I miss this? It's because it was so small. I was looking for like a phone store because like walking like buy phones and stuff. I don't know what I was looking for. The point is. I'd walk past this already, not realizing what it was. So I get in line. The guy in front of me finishes. I walk up, put my phone down. SIM card, please. Then he speaks perfect fluent English. He's like, okay, how many, how many days? And I'm like, eight days. He's like, okay, well, we have seven and we have a week. Or we have seven and we have two weeks. So I'm like, yeah, two weeks is fine. How much? She tells me it was, I can't remember. It was, it was pretty cheap. Under $10. Um, only 15 gigs this time. Which is like, oh, only 15 gigs? Yeah, I've never been used all that those gigs. Um, so I get the SIM card, I'm out of there. At this point, I've been walking for like six hours uh, post eating. I'm getting pretty hungry. I'm also forgetting about the cash. I, I thought I, I, I had accomplished my mission. But in the mall, I'm like, screw it, we're in the mall, let's go down to the bottom floor, which is the giant food area. Um, I'm like, mall food, probably the best, but it's mall food, I don't want to like going around, I can't go to food stalls, but I have no cash. I'm like, oh yeah, cash. So it comes back in my, my mind. 
thought I'd screw it. I'm all footed anyway. Go down. I find this. What was it called? I can't even remember at this point. What was it called? Here, while well, I'm walking this giant loud area, I'm gonna think for myself. Just in case you guys can't hear me. I think I remember. It was something like Hanami's chicken and rice? Hanami, the first word that was throwing me off, I can't remember. Um, but this chicken was like some, like, it was pretty plain chicken. Like, it wasn't raw or anything, but it was pretty plain chicken with this rice that must have been cooked in, uh, it must have been cooked in chicken broth and something else. I could, I could, I've made rice in chicken broth, so I could tell that part. Um, and they had this sweet and sour sauce and this mixture that was kind of like soy sauce, but it didn't, wasn't fully. It had more flavor than soy sauce and less salty. Uh, it was not teriyaki sauce or anything, but it was that. And it cost me like $2.10. It was a full meal. I was full after. It was crazy. Um, I, it wasn't the best meal. The, the chicken, because it lacked a lot of flavor, it really relied on the sauces. Um, I, I'd say it was a 6.5 out of 10 meal, but that's, dude, for $2.10, it filled me up, I'll take it. So at this point, after eating, after chilling, I'm barely remembering out the money. At this point, I'm on the mall Wi-Fi. I'm like, give me directions back home. And so I'm going back home, corner of my eye across the street, I see a money exchange place. It looks very official, one of the, like, the most upkept buildings. Must, I, I assume it's a government building. I'm not too sure how that works around here. If only they can exchange money anyway, I don't know. Um, I go up, the guy, you don't actually go in the building. It's like a little counter on the outside where there's a man. And he nods at me and I, um, he puts up like a, like a sign. I guess the glass is pretty hard to hear through. He puts up a sign and says, insert money or something. So I give him a $50 bill. Uh, hands back out, I do some paperwork, get to the money. Uh, I learned later it was about a 50 cent fee. So yes, it did cost me more than the free at the airport, but it was 50 cents, so whatever. Um, so I got the money, great, I have everything. I go home, get some 7-Eleven snacks and goods to have in my apartment while I'm chilling. And that was day one. It was crazy. Um, day two, I woke up, like 9 a.m. I'm laying in bed and I'm like, dude, I just don't wanna leave. Unlike my place in Singapore, which was a hostel, the moment I woke up, I either watched something in my bed on my phone or instantly got up, took a shower, instantly left, all right? Maybe sit in the lobby for a little bit um, because it wasn't very private. It wasn't very cold. It was pretty warm in the place anyway. Um, but now here at Singapore, when I woke, or not Singapore, in Thailand, I woke up and I'm like, dude, I could just be lazy. Eventually around like 11, I went down to the convenience store, 7-Eleven, which has dirt cheap prices. Like it, they put the convenience in convenience store, guys. Like, it's not like America convenience store where it's like, okay, things are 10 times more expensive here and you're just going here because it's a walk on the road. Like, no. It is the same price as any grocery store, maybe even cheaper. I don't know. I need to be comparing these prices. I might go back to the grocery store today and see what the prices are there because, oh my God, the convenience stores are goaded here. Anyway. And I, I know they're goaded in Japan too, but, bro was not ready for it to be in Thailand. Um, so I go down, I get some like, I get this breakfast thing, I get some chocolate milk. I'm like, oh yeah, chocolate milk. I get all these, a couple snacks, some chips, go back in the room, pig out. And I'm like, dude, I kind of want to, there's a giant TV in my room. The TV, whew, loud. The TV has access to like YouTube and all stuff. So I'm like, dude, I'm just going to relax. 
catch up on YouTube today, get my energy back. I've been traveling the dang world, walking a lot. And so I literally just stay in my home all day. It becomes dinner time. I'm like, I don't really want to go get 7-Eleven food again. The same app, the, the Grab app, which is basically just the Uber app, does have food delivery services. So I'm gonna get the prices. Now it's becoming like Singapore prices. So to get things delivered fully to me, it's like $6. That's so cheap. For Thailand, probably expensive. For Singapore, that's the average price. For America, that is dirt cheap. So I'm like, screw it. Screw it so much. I'm like, I really want Korea again, but I also want to try some new stuff. And so I, just, I was like, screw it. I ordered from two places. I got two different meals. Uh, one curry from this different curry place. It was so good, dude. I might just only eat curry when I'm here. Like, it's actually just so good. Like, Thailand is known for their curry, and I am ready to eat all of it. Um, I got this, uh, I guess it's not called fried rice. It was called something, I can't remember now. It was not called fried rice, but it felt like fried rice. Um, it was really, really good. And total, it cost me like $13 for them both to get delivered to me. But dude, $13, that's still cheaper than an average American meal when you eat out. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's all. Yeah, yesterday, pretty uneventful. That's all I did though. I just relaxed the whole day. Let me get to today, where I'm kind of just walking around. I'm taking the scenic route back to the center of Bangkok I did last time. Uh, this route is a little bit longer than just walking the streets, but it's also way more chill and cool. This side path by the river is pretty nice. Ooh, something I skipped over. The walking in Bangkok is crazy, right? Right now, it looks super chill and safe because I'm on this little side path and no one's here and by the river, right? No, this is not the normal. I chose to record here because it's gonna be chill and I could talk and there'd be like no people. On the main roads, it is more like a game of Frogger mixed with a survival game. Because Frogger for when you're crossing the road, right? I mentioned a normal four-way interstop or intersection and you're on the sidewalk about to cross and it goes green, right? You're like, oh, okay, I can cross now, it's safe. It's not safe, okay? Let me tell you, it's not safe. Cars don't care that you have the right of way. They keep on coming, right? If it's a motorcycle, fear not. The motorcycle drivers here are goaded. They will dodge you perfectly. Even if it's red, the motorcycle will be like, okay, yeah, the guy's crossing, whatever. Um, cars, on the other hand, it's like playing a game of chicken. It's like, who's going to move out of the way? Me or you? Cars will probably kill you. I've had to jump past some cars a few times because they did not want to stop. Um, that's just how it is. Uh, so the four-way intersections are probably the easiest to cross, even though it's quite difficult still. What's the hardest to cross is these like areas just randomly where they have crosswalks and these flashing lights telling cars to stop for pedestrians. Cars do not listen. They will never stop for pedestrians. So you have to literally cross the road during full traffic because traffic never stops in these main roads. You have to just go and pray that, that you make it. And this is the moments where like you have to jump across, like fend for your life. Like it's literally playing Frogger. Um, yeah, uh, the, like I said before, the, the bikes dodge you perfectly. Don't need to worry. The bikes are great. It's the cars you gotta worry about. And lastly, roads like this, right? See this road right here? How big did that look on the camera? Because to me, it looks like an average US like a one way street, right? No, 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 don't be silly. That was a two way street. And that's what all the side streets here in town look like. Um, some are even smaller, actually. And as you probably noticed, those streets don't have sidewalks, right? But don't fret not. Those are perfectly safe for pedestrians. Well, safe is a strong word. Those are uh, perfectly accessible to pedestrians, I should say. So when you're on those roads, cars will just be coming uh, from both directions and you will have to hope they do not hit you. Uh, do not be wearing any headphones because you must listen for cars coming behind you so you can get by the wall because they are not afraid to touch you and go past you and all these things. Uh, if uh, The only time you really need to worry is when one car is coming from one direction, 
one car from the other direction and you're walking and you're gonna be by them when they both come because those cars themselves are playing a game of chicken with each other because oftentimes you actually can't pass very easily in these streets especially if a, if a pedestrian is there you're just screwed um and so yeah like i have no big tip other than just make sure to be listening at all times you can fully ignore motorcycles they are great they will never come anywhere near you don't worry about that well not near you but they won't ever come they'll never come hit you at least so far um but yeah it's it's crazy oh lastly uh that whole thing happens also at night but at night it's a little bit harder to uh, mm, to plan out your moves i'd say because cars are going a little bit faster at night there's less traffic but they're moving faster it's harder to tell at least for me when to go so if you're worried about crossing and being hit i'd say just don't do it at night also i'm probably a strange example because i just walk everywhere like the like i was saying earlier the motorcycle taxi and stuff are dirt cheap if you want to go that route you could probably get anywhere you needed for less than 10 bucks in bangkok so you do you uh, i'm gonna do me i'm walking to the center of the city right now I'm gonna find some random curry place i have my sim card now so don't worry about being lost oh and tip Here's my last tip, last thing I'm gonna say today. If you're with a backpack like me, put a frozen water bottle in the backpack, like just a regular bottle. Put a frozen water bottle in your backpack to where it touches your back right now. My lower back is being cooled down by a frozen water bottle. Huge stress, I found out an accident. Uh, but it's been great, keeping me nice and cool, relatively speaking. And yeah, that's it. Uh, this is my third full day here in Thailand. And I don't want to leave. It is amazing. Food is great. Yes, these streets and everything are pretty decrepit. But it's been really, really fun. A lot less free things to do. A lot of things are paid. I think I might do some temple hopping either today or tomorrow. Uh, check out the local temples. There's this big like five kilometer path. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but we'll see. Anyway, that's it for me guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will go recap maybe in four days, every three days. Because honestly, I, I just plan on eating a bunch of food and that's not too fun to recap. So who knows? But I'll for sure make another one while I'm here in Thailand. That's it for me. Bye guys.